Ali Karane is one of the 94 wetlands identified in India. Beautiful birds, migratory birds as well as resident birds. Great biodiversity. It is a bird watcher's paradise. I have driven to all the woods. I have been seeing parts of the marsh all these years. Ali Karane Marsh is an important asset for the people of Chennai. I would like to dedicate the concept plan and the presentation to the people who have dedicated almost their entire life for Pallikarani. I am not an expert on wetlands or natural environment, that is not my specialization. But my prior experience is in doing public projects. How the public projects can be useful. It is one of the 94 wetlands identified in India. There are more wetlands. The Amsar Convention in 1971 decided that wetlands are very important from an ecological, environmental, even tourism point of view. The government is making India is one of the countries, one of the signatories. So we make a commitment that we will be conserving this, uh, uh, this thing. But it's still a very important thing. Beautiful birds, migratory birds as well as resident birds. So many species, great biodiversity. It is a bird watcher's paradise. 40,000 birds during the season, which is not a small number. Might be even bigger than Vedantangal, which is considered to be a bird sanctuary. Apart from those species, I would like to mention that there are 18 internationally recognized endangered species in Mar in Pallikarane, which is very, very important. There are birds, there are reptiles which are considered to be endangered. Now, Pallikarane wetlands has so many functions to take place. The biodiversity is important. It holds the stormwater especially in that 32 tanks empty their water into Pallikarane marsh area. That all in and around Velacheri, Malipakam and south of Chennai most of the water comes and empties into the Pallikarane. And for Pallikarane wetlands through a canal it flows into the Buckingham Canal which is more than 400 kilometers long. Most of it is on the north side of Chennai 300 kilometers. Again 100 kilometers is to the south side of Chennai. So that is very, very important. And wetlands has so many functions to play. It, it can keep the temperature low. It filters the sediment nutrients and all pollutants. There are a lot of studies done on it. I'm not going to elaborate on it, but I would like to say the Pallikarane marsh is an important asset for the people of Chennai. Even I, who have been living in Chennai city for more than 25 years, did not realize its importance until, until I took up this time. How important the place is. What extent is the place. I've seen it, I've driven through all the roads, I've been seeing parts of the marsh all these years, but never realized the importance. I think 99.99% of the Chennai residents do not realize the importance of the Pallikarane marsh. This wetlands, compared especially with the Point Calimar or many of the other wetlands in India, has a special thing, is that it is close to the very growing metropolis of the city of Chennai, the IT hub or the IT core road. We are having a lot of buildings, all those things, the National Institute of Ocean Technology, Wind Energy Institute, so many other roads have come and all those things. All these things have happened. Now, what can we do now? Now the urbanization, there are so many wetlands in, in the heart of the cities. Calcutta has a major wetland in the heart of the city. Sandarbans is another wetland but it's not in Calcutta. I've been fortunate enough to see the Hong Kong city's wetland. I mean looking from the multi-storied buildings in Hong Kong, you look over to a wetland but I think the area will be much lesser than that. They have converted it into a bio park and it's converted into a museum where a huge lot of children comes into that. And in this era of urbanization, which people say 50% of the population lives in cities, by 2060, 60% of the world's population will live in cities. So cities has to grow. 
Cities occupy only 2% of the Earth's area, but use 5% of the natural resources. And 70% of the worst waste generated globally is generated in cities, which occupies only 2% of the area. 5,000 metric tons of waste is generated in Chennai city itself, and most of that is coming into the Palikarana uh, marsh area, which is a shocking figure. And Chennai will be one of the top four or five waste generating cities in India. We always say, many of the books quote, that US is the big, has the biggest trash generating country. If the world starts generating waste, similar to US, then we need four times the area of the earth for us to survive. If we take that figure into account, I mean you can just take into account, it's in a very serious situation. This is a 200 feet bypass road from Turai Park to, I think, to Palavaram goes through the Tamachi hospital and all those things. Now what has this road done to the whole thing? The problem is that the wetland got divided into two, major two divisions. It's a serious issue. What is the role of Palikarane Marsh? The entire rainwater in Chennai or southern Chennai is draining into the Palikarane Marsh, is not able to drain into the southern part of the Chennai city which consists of the Perimbakam area. You just built a road like a dam. Earthen dam you have built it. Of course, there are some rains, but that's not enough when the floods come. What happens? A small rain causes floods in Chennai. The floods which used to happen once in 10 years or once in 20 years has become a much more frequent. All the climate scientists say that the floods are going to be more and more frequent because of the sea level rise and the global warming which is happening. We have put Palikarane Marsh into an unsustainable use. We have put it into dumping of waste into that land. What was there in 1965, forget about pre-1965, the area which is there now for the marsh is less than 5% of the 1965 figures. Where is the rainwater going to go? And we, it's, uh, uh, not only from Pallik, well, I mean, this is not what has just happened to Pallikarane Marsh. What has happened to Perigudi Lake? What has happened to Velacheri Lake and most of the paddy fields in Chennai? We have built up Madipakam paddy fields. I know Madipakam 25 years ago, there were few residences in Madipakam. We have built up all those paddy fields and built houses. Of course, it is required. People have to leave. People comes before the environment. To, according to at least some of the people, although some of the strong environmentalists say that the environment comes before the people, I think we have to find an integrated approach. We, without the environment, people will not survive. Without the people, I mean, what is the point in having the environment? So we have to find the via media, and that is what CTAC is trying to do. So we have to find what is the best way to look at the conservation of these wastelands. Whatever happened has happened. What can we do now to, to, I mean, how relevant is what we are now trying to talk about? Climate change. Scientists say by 2100, two meters will be the sea level rise. 97% of the climate scientists across the world believes that climate change is a reality. Of course, there are politicians like Donald Trump and the Brazilian president who thinks that climate change is a hoax. And it's plotted by China. But whatever is the reason, climate change is a reality. Whether it's 2 meters, whether it's 1.5 meters, it is a reality which we have to have. And the, real, the problem is around the corner. Don't think that 80, 2100, 2 meters of rise in seawater level, a major part of Chennai will be flooded. 2 meters rise, two, major part of Chennai will be underwater. Many of the residential areas in Chennai will be underwater. MRC Nagar, that foreshore estate, many of the ECR, the, the areas, many of the houses in Buckingham Kana will be done. So it is very, very important. And what is the role Palikarane wetlands can play? It can reduce the, definitely reduce the damage. If you reduce the area further, it will be, I mean, we will not be able to face the uh, 2015 figure. I'm showing a map by Climate Central. And this is, these are the areas which will be below sea level. The sea level will by, rise by 1 meter. So 2100, they say 2 meter, 2.1 meter is the sea level rise. Which means 
by 2050 or 60 or 70, one meter sea level rise is going to happen. You are not, I mean, eight inches of sea level rise has happened during the last two decades. I mean, it's not just going to be all of a sudden coming. Slowly, the sea level is going to increase. Climate change is happening. Disasters are on increase. Floods are on the increase. And this is a map taken from that of the Palikarane area. And if you fill up more and more Palikarane area, the damage will be more. Velachiri will be underwater. More, both sides of the Pallikarane, both sides of the Buckingham Canal will be under. This is one meter. And our generation, my generation might not lead to see this, but the younger generation in Chennai is definitely going to see it. It's only 40 years down the line. Now you hear about these things. I mean, Pallikarane marsh has shrunk to a tenth of its size, 1965. I'm not taking a romantic view of the Pallikarane marsh. I'm not, I mean, just saying the flamingos are there, painted stalks are there, so we should conserve Pallikarane marsh. That's not my argument, or the argument which I'm trying to put forward into this. It has shrunk to one tenth of its size. It's amicus curiae of the High Court has said this. So this is it, and this is what is happening. This, some one photograph was flashed in Hindu few years ago, five column news photograph in the front page and the photograph is taken by Shaju John. He has been consistently documenting Palikarane Marsh and the changes which has been. It's an inconvenient shoot. What has been shown at that time is burning of the waste which is down there. We know how damaging it is to burn the waste. In this era of global warming and climate change, tons of waste, 5,000 tons of waste coming. Think about the amount of carbon dioxide and gases, which are carbon gases, which are emitted in your atmosphere. Situation is very bad. And this is the situation which is happening. Luckily, when the Hindu report came, the corporation stopped burning the waste. But still, the dumping of the waste by the Chennai Corporation, Aland Municipal is happening. Shocking. I mean, you don't see. You see, money in your area, one or two lorries go with the waste. 5,000 tons means more than 500 lorries have to empty their waste into that. And that's it's a very shocking figure. I mean, Chennai Corporation has started segregation of waste in the region, but this is not the segregation of waste done by the Chennai Corporation. It is the segregation of waste done by the people, children, and people who live on the waste of Palikarane Marsh. They segregate the waste, the plastic and the metal and recycle it or to some extent. And in this era, we are talking about 816 pro project to restore Parlikarane Marsh. Is this plan being made with proper session with the experts? Is the plan being discussed widely? We have to look at the birds, we have to look at the environment, we have to look at the people. An integrated approach, a multidisciplinary approach is what we require for the time being. And when we were doing the master plan, I made few trips to the Palikarane Dam, beautiful sight. You can spend hours and hours watching the birds, which you have never seen, even I've never seen. I've, I mean, during my younger days, I used to visit bird sanctuaries, which was one of my hobbies. But there are many birds which are not found in many of those areas, which is that. What the concert plan or what's should be doing is to give back the wetlands to the people of Chennai. That is why we need a development plan. Because the waste is there, the birds are there, it is still more than 700 hectares of land in the heart of the state. We have lost since 1965, 90% has been lost, but still can we conserve or restore at least what is remaining now is what is it? What is the way forward? I mean, that's why I said it has to be a practical approach. It has to be an approach which we have to look, term, look into the long term, not short term interest. Not short term interest of some of the engineers or some of those things. It has to be discussed, debated. There are environmentalists, there are wetland experts, there are biodiversity people, there are ornithologists. All these people have to be discussed. What is important is to be done. Otherwise, we will be making a great mistake. So one of the important things that what we have to do is to restore the Pallikarane Mart. What I say will be considered to be an unimaginable thing, but there are examples across the world where waste dumping yards have become prime spaces. 
Northfield buildings alone. It has become parks and it has become flood mitigating areas and all those things. We can use this public arena marsh to educate the people, create the community awareness. It is a test books for the school children in Chennai. In Dekshana Jitra, where I've been involved for more than 25 years, more than 300,000 children visit every year by paying a ticket fee. Public Arane, which is 700 hectares, which is in the heart of the city, we can bring in 3 million children and teach them the principles of ecology, environment, which is very, very important, which can be done. And it's, a, it's like a textbook. Birds are there, reptiles are there, phytoplankton, food chain, everything can be brought there. It can become a very quiet, accessible, quiet zone for the people of Chennai. Without disturbing the ecology, without creating more waste, we can do an eco-friendly place where people can come in large numbers, enjoy, breathe fresh air. That is something which is a rarity these days. 700 hectares. I'm not saying that we should build roads and we should build uh, uh, multi-story buildings for people. Uh, simple, heritage, eco-friendly structures for the people of Chennai. Let them come. There are no places for people in Chennai. Well, there is only one Marina Beach and Basanagar Beach. So this, these are very, very important. And if we are able to do it, we will be able to restore the public arena marsh. Education is important. Restoration of the marsh is very, very important. We should involve the younger generation, make them sensitized towards the environment, ecology, all those things is very important. Now the marsh is, doesn't have a public access. It is like a closed thing. You can see the marsh on either side of the road. I think it should be open to the public. That is very, very important. So without destroying, with the, with the support of the environmentalists and the wetland experts, we should develop. I'm not talking about, it's not development. It's just making a way which is very, very eco-friendly, which is to be done. We need the community. We, has to be, we need economic growth and development. But at the same time, we need the environment also to be sustained. So the tree, I mean, it's not everything is, has to be mutually beneficial. And I, as a person who have got involved in various public projects, I would like to say that it is very much possible and it is a big, big asset for the people of Chennai which could be done. And who are the people who are going to use? Our own children will use this place. It can be used for adult education. Many people don't know the principles. Let them learn about the Adults also need to learn about the environment. Need to learn about the importance of segregating the waste or treating the waste at home. At least the food waste and things can be treated at home itself with a simple biodigester. You can buy it in Amazon and various other sources. We don't do it. Let us make it. Let us make a good future for our own children. And we will have the serious visitors. I mean, once the Palikarne March, there will be visitors coming from all over the world who seriously wants to study the Palikarne March, and that is uh, very, very important. I am looking at it in a mega project with all kinds of facilities. I am not, uh, where I am not introducing any of the water boards or cars or any of those things. That is not in my agenda. You walk around and see, there can be few entry points. And you walk around and see the public environment. There has to be basic toilet facilities and food facilities, etc. has to be provided. There has to be an arrival zone. Could be there where you learn about the importance of the wetland. And that is very important. So you see the wetland. There should be some place where, I mean, you just show the wetland. Nobody learns anything. It's important. There is a public interpretation center which is already set up by the forest department. I did not know about it till I started working on this project. Once I went there, it was locked up. So why such a facility is getting locked up is, is the thing what I am trying to look at. I am looking at the interpretation center where all the augmented reality, virtual reality, now 5D and 9D projections are available. You have to attract the inner children. You have to make the visit to Pallikarana into an experience. Children should love to go to Pallikarana. We should make it entertaining. Edu edutainment is one of the buzzwords which are being used. It is for the whole Chennai, whole Tamil Nadu, whole India. 
this this place is very very important you have to do ecological restoration we should involve the experts in converting the wastelands back into thing we converted marsh into wastelands in say 40 years we will should be able to convert the waste back into marshland in at least 8 years but at least let us make a beginning we should convert it into a biopark we should conserve this wetland i'm not saying that we should convert we should conserve this according to the ecological principles it is very very important that this is to be conserved it's a major reservoir for rainwater harvest you can create a polyterrane trail with minimum interference and people learning about the birds and there are other birds let us know about the birds what is a bullpup what is a kingfisher what are the breeding habits small birds are there bigger birds are there ground birds are there they i mean there are migratory birds coming to pallikarane so many species there are resident birds for of who are seen throughout the year they survive on the fish which is there and uh, you, we should turn it into an outdoor museum i'm not saying that huge museum construction of the building none of those things we should put notice boards or bulletin boards or explanatory boards all over the trail so that people can identify the birds now to know you have to depend on a bird expert so even if you don't know an expert on birds still you will be able to make a trail and learn about various things there are more than 30 species of butterflies we can convert some of the areas into a butterfly garden there are so many fish species the various fish species are there in this we don't know about the, any of these things as i said earlier there are 18 internationally considered endangered species in pallikarane flora the plants which are very very important in this area which is very there are uh, uh, underwater plants and underwater plants also play a major role you can learn about the food chain i mean we learned in textbooks we don't know about it but you can see this, that is why i said this can become a textbook for the school children we should use audio gates we should hold workshops we should tell, i mean i mean this can become like a movement and if we can learn our future generation will grow we can set up a wetland study station what is the importance of wetlands what is the importance of the rain tree forest i mean you have to learn everything has a role to play in this earth which is very important bird watching we can set up some simple structures and we can set up cycling i am against putting in any kind of motorized vehicles into this area you can put in walk it walking track paths and cycling tracks could be thought about pathways which are very eco friendly we should not be doing it with concrete and tons of concrete which is what makes some of the uh, uh, pwd engineers tend to do because it's easier to do we should create shaded areas nice areas we should do a forest station we should identify the species which will grow and that's very along with that we might i mean why we can even think about an amphitheater every saturday we can have a program or a music thing or anything we can have a children's play area is we can create community art chennai is full of artists they can come and create various works in this in this area and we can create a wetland museum you know there are many places i've seen in ecologically fragile areas temporary constructions but housing museums building coming on timber and steel or steel so which can be removed which can be dismantled so it's important to have a wetland museum talking about it there are many smaller cities than chennai which has aquariums and if you want to see an aquarium we have to go to vgp world because there they are the only people who are having some kind of aquarium in the in the, in the city we should think about signage which are important which is very very important to think and to conclude the talk let us give the wetlands back to the nature without nature we are nothing and it's getting proved even every day with every cyclone with every floods every disaster all over the world arctic ice melting greenland ice melting it's becoming clear and clear that we cannot play with nature we cannot fight with nature we have to go in tune with nature so use this opportunity to tell the future generation that we have to live along with nature let us revegetate let us restore pallikarane marsh 
Let us stabilize our plans. Let us reverse the dump yard. It's a dream. What has become a dump yard in 40 years or 50 years? Let us reverse it in 80 years. But let us start that event now. And there are examples across the world where it has been done. Chennai's future is in our hands. Let us not do this injustice to the future generation of Chennai. Let us let our children have a decent life. Not only these three children, these photographs are taken by Shaju John from Palikarne March, who make their living, who leaves them. There are three-year-old, four-year-old children treading through their the wastelands. They are dependent on Palikarne wastelands. Let us make a living, not only for them, for the entire generation. Thank you.